picture. And uh, this is Dan Wynn. Back up. Yeah, and, and Dan is coming forward. I want to be clear on something else as far as the ground rules go. If you intend to speak, and I'm going to do it in five minutes, if you intend to speak as a group, you need to tell us at the time you come to the podium who you represent in those other groups. That's one thing. Wait for a little bit. Uh, How can you do a strong We don't, uh, the only thing that's not going to be is that okay. Well, can I speak as me, as a business owner, and for a group? Who is the group? The Baytown Land Union Association. Yes. Okay. All right, once again, I'm sorry about what I did earlier. Can you guys, can you guys hear me? Okay, because I have a loud mouth. All right, Mayor Bauer and the Board of Aldermen. My name is Jan Wynn, I live at 6125 Ashport. Um, I am a 50-year resident of Braytown. I am also a one twin school of dance. I have been in business here for 35 years. And I am representing the Braytown Land Dean Association. We are a couple blocks off of 63rd Street. We are a 50 unit, a 55 and up uh, association. Um, we do oppose the uh, Walmart grocery store. Um, no, this is, I know we're all friends and that is not the vision I had for the Raytown Plaza for years. And so many people have said, well, we can't be Brookside Plaza, we can't be downtown East Summit, we can't be Independence Square. And I, and I said, why not? Uh, we didn't drink big enough, we didn't work hard enough. I always have told, we can't do that. You're so excited about Google, uh, Google Fiber coming here, like, oh, we did it before d or Rayton is on the news. Well, we can too, be like those other cities. I, I never even thought I would, if friends or family came to visit and say, oh, let's go to the Rayton Plaza and look at the pride of Rayton, the Walmart grocery store. That was never in my mind. And I know this is a quick fix that we need tax revenue, but think of like putting a band-aid on a war wound. It would it would get more infected and it would become serious and it would be trauma and then death. I think what you're doing here, if we put that there, that we are going to have a worse problem in five years because I'm sorry, Walmart is famous for leaving, and then you've got a building that's going to be there, and that's going to be a bigger death for the Raytown Plaza than what we have here now. We've dropped the ball for 13 years, and I don't know why we can't have what Lee Summit has, or why it can't be restaurants and dress shops where kids can, we can't go anywhere and buy school clothes or eat, eat a nice steak dinner here in Raytown. We have to always spend our tax money in those other cities and we can't spend it in Raytown. I live here because of the fire department and the police department, best anywhere. But I went to Fox Drugs when I was 16 years old and when I got my license, I went and got my car insurance from Sue Frank's father. The businesses that have stayed here during the tough times of Raytown, years and years ago, we didn't jump ship and go to Lee Summit or Independence. We stayed in Raytown through the hard times. And we're still here. I didn't, there used to be six dance studios. I'm still here. The businesses that stayed loyal and stayed in Raytown, when we stayed here, I love Raytown. I am your biggest supporter. There should be some loyalty to us who have stayed here and supported Raytown. Uh, nobody loves Raytown more than I do. And I, I will never leave Raytown. But uh, I just feel this is a, a mistake we're making, that that wasn't the vision I saw when I've talked to uh, some of you and I don't know you. But that wasn't the vision I had for our breakdown by Raytown. It's not what I, and it's not because of trucks coming in or what I'm, 
don't know what you guys are, were talking about. We have so many grocery stores, and yes, trucks come in late at night. That's what they do. I'm sad because of the vision I, I had imagined of what, right, what it was going to be. So, but I do know that my association, and they're all elderly, we are, they are totally against this. I just hope you look at all sides. And this is done, like I said, in a civil, polite manner because I love all of you. But um, we're talking about a structure that's going up and really a real problem that we need to remember is uh, more Oklahoma because my thoughts and prayers are there when all the structures there now are not there. Thank you. Just wait a hold on a second, please. I have a question for you. And during the difference between public comment in a, in a general sense that we had earlier here is that we as a board typically don't respond. It's different though in public hearings. We, we do sometimes open the dialogue with you. I, I'd like to ask you a question. When you, when you talk about the vision, your vision, what buildings, what type of establishments did you envision in that? Well, I think I told you a year ago, and I'm going back years ago when we dropped the ball and we didn't get Stroud's Chicken and we didn't get TGIS. I mean, I feel like the ball's been dropped way too long. I know David that owned uh, Outback, you know, worked for a year. I worked with him for a year to get Outback here. And at the time, that was legitimate. It, he, the headquarters in Florida wouldn't let him bring it here because at the time we probably wouldn't have supported it. I think we would now. But the vision I had that there would be a restaurant and we'd get like a micro little jewelry like Charming Charlie's or a little Old Navy. You know, we'd have kids from Raytown, kids on their way home, you know. There'd be a clothing store for girls or one for you know, guys uh, or uh, boutique shops. I, I can't go buy clothes anywhere, like, you know, a real, like, shop, but I thought it would, it, it, you guys keep telling me, oh, you, we can't, we can't have that, and I keep saying, why can't we? I have to, offered for years to go after people to bring those shops here, but I'm nobody. I'm not an alderman, I don't represent the city, and you know, David, I don't take a no. You know, if, like I, last year I said they're bringing those micro, those hybrid stores here to put on 350 Highway with Red Lobster and Olive Garden. Why can't we have one of those? I know we were been working for a year and I keep calling and checking to see if anybody's checked, could we get one of those? I mean, I know I could get somebody, kind of somebody would just, maybe our lawyers are too big or they're not big enough. And Walmart, they're used to doing this. They're paid to do this. They have to come talk to communities. They do it in every city across America. And they know that they're going to have to fight residents like us. But they're going to, we lose, they win, David and Goliath. And they have to do this. Well, yeah, let me ask you this. Are you, are you aware that, that in every development plan that's come before the city in the last 14 years, the development plan has included a grocery store at that site? I know, but we have enough grocery stores. Yeah. We don't, I don't want another grocery store. We have enough grocery stores. Too. Please continue. Am I out of time? You're, no, you're, you're past the time. We're asking questions. You're, you're doing great. Okay, because if, if I'm out of time and somebody else needs time, I can... Well, you're good. You're good. Okay, so... I want a restaurant. I wanted a restaurant for 10 years. So, but this application is for a grocery store. Well, I don't care. <laughs> Perhaps it's time for another recess. <laughs> Mr. Mayor. Mr. Gray. Thank you. Uh, Ma'am. Yes. I Oh, hi, Jason. Hi. Uh, Alderman Green. Oh, just Jason's fine. Okay. Um, so, let me get this straight. You have something envisioned for downtown that's more multi-use, if you will. Family-friendly, where we go shop and eat, and we go with our family, and, like, the community goes and says, this is downtown Raytown. 
So just a diversity of shops, if you will. Yes, like the downtown Lee Summit or like the Independent Square, the Brookside Plaza. Thank you, ma'am. All right, thank you for, and I think you're all wonderful. Just please vote now. Okay, Susan Dolan is up and Aaron Pizer is on deck. Welcome and thanks for your patience. Good evening, Mayor Alderman. My name is Susan Dolan. I live at 6704 Vermont Avenue in Raytown. Mayor Bauer, on March 27, 2011, in your dissertation letter to the, Rain, uh, uh, to the uh, Raytown Chamber, you said, as your mayor this past four years, I'm proud to bring the experienced leadership and demonstrated professionalism which will be required as soon as the governing body and administrative staff will begin working on the 212 budget. I know this will be another, another difficult discussion as we continue to address growing demands for services with reduced revenues, but I'm confident in the abilities of this administration and the governing body to do what is best for the community and continue to provide the best value possible. This is not a time to change the direction of the city. That was a mere 24 months ago. And the changes that are being considered this evening that are being, being voted upon, this one in particular, Walmart, is one I vehemently oppose, as do, I know do others. I'd like to read from an article I found on the internet from a site called economiccollapseblog.com. It says, is Walmart destroying America? Here are some facts about Walmart that will absolutely shock you. America absolutely loves Walmart. 100 million customers visit Walmart every single week in this country. But is Walmart good for America? That's a question that most people will never stop and ask. Most of us love shopping in big clean stores that are well packed with super cheap merchandise. But the truth is that Walmart is destroying America and in a lot of ways. Walmart has destroyed tens of thousands of small businesses and countless manufacturing jobs over the past couple of decades. They've become a gigantic retail behemoth that sells five times more stuff than any other retailer in the United States. Unfortunately, a large percentage of all the stuff sold at Walmart is made overseas. What that is costing the U.S. economy in terms of lost jobs and lost revenue is incalculable. But Walmart is a perfect example of where our economic system is headed. Our economy is becoming completely and totally dominated by highly centralized monolithic predator corporations that ruthlessly crush all competition and will stoop to do just about anything in order to cut costs. In the future, Will we all be working for gigantic communal entities that funnel all the wealth and economic rewards to a very few tiny elite? That sounds very much like how communist China works, and red-blooded Americans should want no part of that. America is supposed to be about free enterprise and competition and working together to build up the economy and this country, and Walmart is destroying much of that. Following are 18 facts about Walmart that you may find shocking. The average U.S. family now spends more than $4,000 a year at Walmart. In 2010, Walmart had revenues of $421 billion. That amounts to, excuse me, that amount was greater than the GDP of 170 different countries, including Norway, Venezuela, and the United Arab Emir, em, excuse me, Emirates. If Walmart was a nation, it would have the 23rd largest GDP in the world. Walmart now sells more groceries than anyone else does in America. In the United States today, one out of four, every four grocery stores, excuse me, one out of every four grocery dollars is spent at Walmart. 
Amazingly, 100 million customers shop at Walmart every single week. Walmart has opened more than 1,100 super centers since 2005 alone. And today, they have more than 2 million employees. If Walmart was an army, it would be the second largest military on the planet behind China. Walmart is the largest employer in 25 different U.S. states. According to the Economic Policy Institute, trade between Walmart and China resulted in the loss of 133,000 manufacturing jobs in the United States between 2001 and 2006. Maybe time has expired, please. Let me cut to the chase then. Walmart has I believe, excuse me if I missed, I'm, I'm trying to quote this accurately off my top of my head. 40% I believe of their employees are now on Medicaid because they can't afford to buy their own insurance. The wages are low. They undercut local businesses driving them out of business. I think we're going to find that our, the economy in Raytown is going to head downhill because of them. I'd like to follow, close with, with mentioning Rare, Mayor Bauer that in your dissertation letter 32711 you said the foundation of this city and community was built upon the labor and dedication of countless business owners like yourselves over the years. Walmart in Raytown will damage those upon you have you have rained your praise in the past and I beg this uh, city to reconsider seriously what they're going to do to all of us here. Thank you for your time. And Pfizer's up on the jury. Good evening, Mayor and, and Council. And uh, I wrote down a few thoughts here that I'll uh, take a few minutes and share with you. And I'm here, uh, I guess I'll follow suit with the First Lady who spoke representing myself as well as Walmart. Um, I'm a Walmart associate and I'd like to share with you a little bit about my story and, and, and what Walmart means to me. Um, I actually started many years ago with Walmart part-time. I was working a full-time security job. I needed a second part-time job. and Probably like a lot of people, I just never saw myself making a career out of Walmart. And so I went and I got a part-time job at Walmart. And uh, I started to see things at Walmart that I really enjoyed and that I could really believe in. I found a... I'm sorry. I, keep cutting out. I found a family atmosphere. I found people who cared about customers, who cared about associates. I remember one instance in particular where the store manager of the store I was working in uh, responded to the pharmacy to deal with a, an upset customer and the issue was that this lady was unable to pay for some medicine that she had come in to pick up. It was simply more than she had expected it would be. And I, I remember that manager, his name was David, and he took out his checkbook and just out of his pocket paid for that lady's medicine. Never knew her, never saw her, probably would never see her again, but I thought, man, this, this guy cares about people. Um, I remember finding, finding benefits that were better than what I had finding pay that was better than what I had. And it wasn't long before Walmart ended up my full-time job. And then the other job I kept as, as the part-time. Um, over the years, Walmart invested in me, as I see them do with many associates, to where I'm now at the district level. I'm a district manager within the security division of Walmart. And, and I'll make this comment too, a couple of folks had, had talked about Walmart being a, a huge corporation and that, and, and I think one lady said that, you know, Walmart is, has to go talk to the community and that type of thing. I'll tell you, uh, the company did not ask me to come here tonight. I asked them, hey, do you mind if I go talk uh, to the city tonight about this issue? Because I believe in it so strongly. And, uh, and, and I'm, I'm proud to be a Walmart associate. 
you know, I think about some of the things that I'm able to get involved with through our local stores here, community outreach, things like volunteering for REAP, the Raytown Emergency Assistance Program, or volunteering at harvesters where we're sorting food. And the ironic thing is a lot of that food ends up being food that came from Walmart stores that we had donated. You know, I think about uh, raising money for Ronald McDonald Charities with the team of folks that, that work with me in the security division or sustainability where we've gone and helped with the Missouri River cleanup and all these things make me so proud to be a part of what I believe is one of the best companies in the world. I look at what they've done for me and for my family taking care of us over the years and giving me a way to provide for my family and I don't even I don't have a college degree but yet they gave me a chance and they invested in me and trained me up from an hourly part-time associate to eventually being a district manager and I see that with so many associates where they come in and little by little they're able to move up where they started out part-time and now they're full-time and then they may get to an hourly supervisor position and then you know one day they're managing a store and that type of thing so it makes me very proud to be a part of Walmart um, you know I mentioned Walmart it, it is a big corporation but at the same time it's normal people it's me I'm a Raytown resident have been for eight years now just normal people providing for their families serving the communities that they're in I will say this that uh, you know as a customer because I also shop at Walmart you know unfortunately I, I get paid by them and then I end up giving a lot of my money back you know but uh, buying groceries and that type of thing but I'll tell you this as relates to this store in particular I live just a few blocks away from this proposed site for this grocery store and I and my wife are thrilled about the prospect of having a smaller format grocery store that's three or four blocks from the house. We can get in and out of very quickly. Uh, so we're thrilled about that. When I think too about the impact that I believe it would have on the surrounding businesses and seeing that strip mall on the other side of Blue Ridge filling up and businesses moving into that that for eight years it's been largely empty. What's your time to you to wrap up with Oh, okay. I thought I had extra time because I was representing the company. <laughs> you know, I, 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 I just, I'm really surprised. I mean, this is not, this is not great. Come on, let's have a little respect for everybody in the room, please. Not asking too much. Certainly. Um, and uh, I guess the last comment, too, is... is five minutes. Just five minutes is what you had, so they need to wrap up based on five minutes. Okay. Well, I'll, I'll end it there. I mean, the bottom line is that, again, I'm, I'm just proud to be a part of the company. Uh, happy to shop there, and I would certainly ask you to consider all sides and, and approve that, uh, that store going in. Thanks. Thank you for your time. Singster, and, my, and the address is uh, 6412 East 86, but I'm just pronouncing that. That's correct. All right, thank you. And then uh, Dolores Mathis is on deck. Welcome. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, my name is Jerry Seamster. I worked for Walmart for 27 years. I started out uh, in Alamosa, Colorado, and I've been all over, the, all over with Walmart. Uh, I have been in Raytown here for 13 years. I work in the uh, receiving area, the, R the DSD area. Have been real involved with the merchandise and items that we donate to the REAP uh, organization here in Raytown. Uh, Al and I've become real familiar with Al and his group. Volunteered for the Christmas Club there and working with the Christmas Club. Uh, 
I think there's been some misconceptions about uh, everybody that works for Walmart is on welfare. I probably would be happy to uh, uh, match my profit sharing with anybody in the room. Uh, I'm very proud of the fact that we've had great success uh, with, the, with the company and what is given back to the associates uh, in this area. So, but my most proudest thing is what the, the contributions that we made to the, make to the communities. I've been in Arizona, I've been in California, I've been in Idaho, I've been in Oregon, and started out in, in Colorado. And every area that I've ever been in, we've been involved in that, sit, that uh, sit, uh, citizens with anything that's in those towns, anything that we can help with those situations and help the people. Uh, they always come to Walmart for anything, any of their needs. And we've always volunteered to help out in any of the communities I've ever been in. So thank you. Welcome, sir. <laughs> Thank you. Um, good evening. My name is Dolores Mathis. My name is Dolores Mathis. I live at 5901 Elm Avenue, Great Town, Missouri. For 37 years, I have patronized the businesses of Great Town, and not once have I ever invoked the axiom beware buyer until Walmart. Number one, I would never shop at Walmart at night. Number two, I would put my purse inside my, whoops, I would put my purse inside my coat. I would check how the meat, how it's packaged, if it's packaged in Mexico. USA, Canada, or China. And then I would go to the store. And lastly, number four, I would thank the policeman at the door as I leave Walmart. Therefore, I respectfully request, whoops, re therefore, I respectfully request that you courageously listen to your constituents their vote and their tax money put you beautiful men here and ladies. And I would respectfully request that you do not listen to these men from Bentonville, Arkansas, but listen to your constituents. Thank you. Seventy Second Street, Raytown, Missouri. Been here since 1969. I love the city the way it is. I kind of think of the uh, the old westerns where the wagon came into town selling snake oil and elixir, and the, the people bought it. And they were happy to buy it. I uh, I don't go along with that. I think we're being sold a bill of goods on this. I. Uh, I am, do think that one good neighbor we have was Sutherland when they bought the old rate at the old uh, Walmart store. They were a good neighbor. And uh, uh, one last thing is uh, the citizens of Raytown were dealt kind of a cruel blow with the way closing. And I can see this store, I won't be alive yet because I'm too old, but I believe this store will probably close in 10 or 15 years and you're going to be sitting with a big box store. Thank you. Thank you. And the corridor is up and Bob Southern is up there. I'd like to yield my time. 
I'm Bob Southern. I live at 6625 Ralston. The opinions I'm going to make tonight are personal. They're my own personal. Do me a favor, please, and uh, listen. Thank you. Everybody wants to be able to hear this. The opinions that I make tonight are personal. They're my personal opinions. Uh, I'm sure that after I make these, that neighborhood services will be down my street <laughs> checking see if there's any violation that I can be charged with. <laughs> and if I am, I will be back at a council meeting to report. <laughs> probably my neighbors, probably my neighbors will not speak to me it's because somebody's gonna tell the street department, don't do anything to that block. <laughs> you know, I think our real problem here is ego and greed. I can see the powers that be after fine meal and drinks with Walmart executives saying this is in the bag. And Walmart saying, what about rezoning? Don't worry about it. We appointed the Planning and Zoning Commission. They'll do what we tell them. But oh, planning and zoning stood up and got some backbone. Let's go to the real issue. I believe that's money. Somebody is going to make some money out of this deal. You know, I think. Some people are going to make some money, and some have already made some money, and now they're going to have to deliver on their promises. You know, I spent 25 years in sales. When we wanted a big contract, there were several things we did. One, we bought fine meals and drinks. We bought sports tickets. You know, we sent people on Canadian fishing trips. We had a condo in Breckenridge that we let people use for free. And we even hired hookers. <laughs> we paid for them because we wanted to sell. I think some of this is going on here. <laughs> and I also believe that we should check on the last election and see if Walmart funneled any money into anybody's campaign to be elected or re-elected. Get my other page here. And at this point in time, I haven't got a lot of money, but I'll put up $100 in a fund to investigate if there's been any criminal activity in this process. And I will also put up $100 in a fund to have a recall position. You know, yeah. the thing about this whole thing, it smells. <laughs> If it looks like a duck, it talks like a duck, walks like a duck, it's probably a duck. And if I have insulted some of you people, I do not apologize. Thank you. Susan Thorson. I reside at 5621 Blue Ridge Boulevard. I'd like to say that I am also speaking on behalf of my husband who can't be here. He is in Afghanistan right now. Nearly a decade ago, thank you. And unfortunately, that's, and I appreciate you saying that, but that's five minutes. Over. Okay, that's thank fine. You. Thank you. Nearly a decade ago, Walmart's 
3,600 U.S. stores and 100 distribution centers, including their gigantic parking lots, occupied roughly 75,000 acres, and the company intended to almost double its footprints by, year, by 2015. At that, same, at that same time, they had more than 300 empty stores nationwide. 300. Most were abandoned when the company had larger, larger stores in the same vicinity, just like what we would have here in Raytown. By the year 2000, Walmart had left behind more than 25 million square feet of unoccupied, concreted, waste, wasted space across the country. They claim they try to sell these properties, but the only potential buyers are the big box retailers, and Walmart will not sell to real estate to any competitor. And yes, Walmart does own their own realty company. It's called Walmart Realty. They even lease spaces in their operating stores, so why are they so opposed to leasing our space from us? People are surprised when Walmart wants to open up stores within a few miles of one another. But destroying jobs is part of the Walmart saturation strategy. In their own stories, they keep their employees right at the poverty line while they wheel and deal with governments to to suck out profits for the corporate office. And, and they place their stores so close together that they become their own competitors. It's been said that the Walmart store openings destroy almost three local jobs for every two they create. Once everybody else is wiped off the map, they're then free to thin out their stores, leaving many hundreds of concrete ghost lots in their wake. They still own the property, of course, and they could do any number of beneficial community-oriented things with it. But do you ever see that happening? Instead, we get to enjoy their blight and feel, pretty proud, feel proud for handing over to them the little land we have left. It's that, it's that image of Raytown. Is that the image of Raytown that we want to sell? Lower wages, higher un unemployment, and desert deserted shops. Because that's... That's the direction we are heading in by considering deals like this. Given the corporatist government tax and spend paradise we live under, it's no surprise that right now American corporate profits are at, all, at an all-time high, while the percentage of Americans living in extreme poverty is also at an all-time high. This type of scenario is what, is what is driving our economy into the ground at every level. I've seen where Walmart has made use of well over a billion dollars, that's a billion with a B, in government subsidies to create its fortunes, meaning the six heirs of Walmart founder, Sam Walton. They have the net worth that is roughly equal to the net worth of the bottom 30% of all Americans combined. This outcome obviously did not occur because they engaged in entirely fair business. We know firsthand that their playing field hasn't been level. They shafted Raytown citizens to the tune of a cool 1.8 million to prop up their revenues, plus almost $70,000 a year to pay for the upkeep of their new land. We sat here to get sucked dry and have our schools and services run into the ground. Starting today, we need to get Raytown out from under this and break the cycle. If Walmart really gave a damn about our community and its future, there are things that it could, could offer to show bridge, uh, the bridge building. One, they can offer to lease land here rather than buy it. That way, while we still have to clean up their mess, at least we would still have something left. They can offer to repay the $1.8 million plus the yearly $70,000 that should be that should be a no-brainer. Or three, they can come up with an actual building plan that isn't full of holes and what ifs and, uh, and we don't know. Certainly isn't full of 15 foot high walls. Nothing screams serene downtown stroll through the, <laughs> through the neighborhood like a tall ghetto concrete wall with fencing. <laughs> And you, know, and you know what, better yet, why don't they just move their store down to a couple blocks down the road where there is already grocery stores build, building waiting, grocery buildings waiting that are all ready for, for it to be open.
Okay. I would, ser I would seriously encourage each and every one of the board to vote against this Walmart dog and pony show. <laughs> it is a dog and pony show, especially for people like me who actually care about their, uh, our well-being and what, where we live. Board members, please do understand that the vast majority of the city does not want another Walmart here. So those of you who still choose to vote in favor of this blatant financial illiteracy will not be reelected in two years. That is a guarantee the citizens of Raytown can give you in exchange for giving away their community. at 7105 Harvard Avenue here in Raytown. I'd like to address some comments that the board made at the last meeting after a lot of the people had left. It was said that you believe the reason we're against changing the plan for the green space was because of the name Walmart. You seem to apply that if this were any other company at all, we'd be okay with it. And I'm sure that there's people here tonight that don't like Walmart in any way, shape, or form. But there's people here that really don't care about the name on the building and uh, don't appreciate being told that we don't understand the reason that we're against this. It came across to me as pretty common sense. It was also implied that we wanted, to, we all wanted the bridal shop when they were trying to buy the property, and that some people on the board didn't see what the difference was between the bridal shop and the neighborhood market as far as the design goes. You also implied that we were being unreasonable with our demands that only small businesses be allowed to operate in the green space. I don't like the plan that Walmart has come up with for the grocery store. I don't think the entire green space should be used only for one business. I think there should, could be some wiggle room in the current design standard, but I'm against basically scrapping the most important parts, at least to, that I think, for downtown of the plan, and that's what Walmart's asking us to do. I'd be okay with the neighborhood market there if they reduced the size and they complied with the current design standard. I also wouldn't mind another type of business there, Walmart or otherwise, uh, in the 20 to 30,000 square foot range if it were some kind of family activity center like a Cool Crest or a bowling alley or something like that, as long as there was still room for other small businesses to occupy. I think a farmer's market would be a good big draw downtown during the growing season. They have one in Overland Park. And it's crowded on the weekends. I also don't think the city has properly marketed the green space. I haven't seen any signs up advertising the properties for sale. I'd like to know what the city has done besides just getting an appraisal and waiting for an offer to come along. There'll be a much bigger draw for small and big businesses with Google Fiber coming to Raytown. That combined with the fact that we've already had an offer from a big company, Walmart, for the green space, it's only going to make it more attractive in the future. I also heard that Walmart has offered quite a bit more money for some of the other adjacent properties than they have for the entire green space. It seems like some of the city's leadership just wants to jump in, jump on the first offer that comes in so they can wipe their hands of this property. A grocery store by itself isn't going to do much to increase traffic at, at the other small businesses. It'll also not increase much more sales tax revenue. It's only going to siphon business and tax dollars away from the other existing grocery stores. I think we can do much better than that. Another big issue I have, and you guys kind of surprised me tonight. You kind of changed from what you normally do. When you say uh, that you've had ex parte communication, it won't affect your decision. If the aldermen aren't supposed to let what we tell them affect their decision, why does the city post their contact information on its website? What good does it do to contact our representatives if they won't give us any consideration? Wouldn't it be better if they would say, if they had an ex parte communication, that they would give it fair consideration, like a lot of you have done tonight, rather than no consideration at all? This isn't 
a courtroom. You're not judges in a trial. You're our elected representatives. You all have a very important decision to make tonight. Do you listen to the citizens of Raytown and vote no? Or do you think that you know better than the people who elected you and vote against our wishes? This is our downtown. Please don't settle, because I'm sure we can do better. Thank you. I'm Jim DeLong at 5900 Laurel. I'd all like to nominate that young man for mayor. Uh, anyway, uh, I think there's a history that goes along with this grocery store business. I'm not, I am anti-Walmart, but more importantly is the history of the grocery store in this area. Just a half a block from where Walmart poses the grocery store was the Raytown Plaza. For years, there's a thriftway store there. When they went out of business, nobody ever came back in. So that place went kaput. Uh, there's a grocery store that's just behind, north of the uh, McDonald's up here on Blue Ridge Boulevard. That uh, grocery store went out. Nobody's come in to replace that. Uh, Snybar Road in Blue Ridge Boulevard. There was a grocery store there that's now a church. They went out of business and they're no longer there. Just three blocks to the west where Walmart proposes a grocery store, there's been six different, my wife and I was kind of with it, there were six different grocery stores that have tried to make a living at 63rd, is that the 60, 63rd Street Center? Is that the name of the project? They're gone, every one of them. But yet Walmart, they've got this great plan. They're going to put a grocery store in downtown Raytown. History proves it doesn't work. Raytown is landlocked. I feel like we're giving our, away our last viable asset to a Walmart, to a project that has proven in the past does not work in downtown Raytown. I don't think the last 10 to 15 years that people are looking at that. I say two, three years. I don't think uh, Save Lot lasted a year, did they? Before they were gone. Mrs. Nelson said that this project here, it wasn't producing any revenue. Neither is the empty grocery store over on 63rd Street Center. Our green space is our last viable asset for downtown. Do not give it away to people that are not going to maintain it and keep it. You've got pretty much, I feel like your decisions have already been made just by your posture and the questions that you guys ask. Uh, if, if anything, we require a demolition bond from these guys. If they're going to build it, make them tear it down when they leave and put it back like it was at the very, very least. And then I have a couple other questions. You guys are keep talking about the five, the, all the things that they comply with. What are the three things that they're not complying with? And this oak tree that we're talking about, isn't the big old one in the middle of this building, not on the corner? Yes. Isn't that the one we're concerned about? Is the, one, the big one in the middle of the property, not the one on the corner? You're going to cut down that big one in the middle, right? Isn't that the one that, that, not the one that everyone's concerned about? Mm -hmm. But you guys have, have adjusted this emphasis on the one in the corner. Is that not true? Isn't the big one in the middle the one we're worried about? Yes. But they're going to cut that baby down. But you diverted that attention away to the one in the northwest corner. True or not true? Sir, what are the three points? Oh, I've got to ask you, sir. Mr. Lawyer, you said you had a contract in the... Okay, do you have a contract? Do you have a contract in order? Okay, does the board have a contract with Walmart in place? That's the way the lawyer is sitting waiting to me. Because they've reserved the right to do things. Do you have a contract in place with Walmart? Who which represents Walmart? So in other words, we're just all spinning our wheels up here. That's the whole property, sir. And that's another thing. Six hundred fifty thousand dollars at the end of the year in your bank accounts. How much? Six thousand five hundred. Okay, but at the end it's going to be six hundred fifty thousand dollars. That won't even be in the budget in the year. That money will be gone, and so will our own last asset in downtown Raytown. That six hundred fifty thousand dollars will never be seen again at the end of the year, and we'll have nothing to show for it except a lot of promise. And the history shows that grocery stores do not work in this area. And for those that reason alone, I would ask that you vote it down. Thank you.
Thank you. Um, my name is Karen Diffie and I live at 5601 Burge Cutoff. Break down. Uh, it seemed that uh, late in the evening, after many had left, some of the members of the board were somewhat dismissive of the statements people made opposing Walmart, attributing and reducing their dislike to the name of Walmart and not the entity of Walmart as a corporation and employer. I'm going to quote Shakespeare. A rose by any other name would smell sweet. You can refer to a Walmart grocery store as a neighborhood market, but it is still a Walmart, one of the largest retailers and employers worldwide, whose employees have notoriously low wages and, provi <coughs> and provide adequate health insurance to shockingly few. It would seem, however, that the city of Raytown doesn't like the name Walmart, as it is referred to only as a neighborhood market on their homepage. It does not appear on the agenda for tonight either. Am I wrong, or was this land going to be rezoned for some other reason than to let Walmart have their preferred space? <coughs> Walmart is one of the largest employers worldwide. I don't think they are responsible to their employees, and if this is how low prices are achieved, count me out. Frankly, I am surprised at the acquiescence of communities to allow Walmart to construct new buildings with the abundance of retail spaces available in this economy, considering Walmart's history of relocating. But it's not my job to convince you not to vote for the rezoning land, for the rezoning of the land for Walmart, but your job to convince us that the zoning was put in place by a board by a board should be, I'm sorry, but your job to convince us that the zoning was put in place by a board should be disregarded for a Walmart. The burden of proof lies with our elected officials to show us how great of an impact a Walmart will make on the community. So I ask, what research was done to determine that a grocery store will work here and why is a good fit for the city. At the last meeting, Walmart couldn't even say why they chose this location, and I, I tried to look at the minutes to quote directly, so, um, but I didn't see them online. He said he had worked for Walmart for 28 years, and he had never seen their formulas deciding where to put a store. He said something like, Walmart's internal model popped up that a neighborhood market would work at this location. Is there any evidence beyond personal belief, any, resor any research or study with the existing community, perhaps increasing property value? <coughs> I think that it's surprising that the community wants Walmart to construct a new building at a site considering it is just a matter of time and not that long it would seem before Walmart wants to move somewhere else. Thank you. Thank you. My name is James Peacock. I live at 5601 Blue Ridge Cutoff. Um, I don't know how I could pitch a business to you and not look foolish if I said, well, there's been the same business model here. We tried four of them. I propose to do the same thing and probably fail miserably, unless I had tremendous financial backing. I don't know how I could do that at my job where I work and be taken seriously. I really, it just boggles my mind. Anyways, moving on. Um, it was pointed out that during the last meeting that uh, there's some things said after people went home, and it was about 11.45 during the last meeting, something very close to this was said. I say very close because minutes are not available. It is just a brand, Walmart, which citizens have a problem with. It is our job as a government, as government officials, not to discriminate simply because of the name. Okay. So after at least a thousand people have signed a petition and a wide array of people over the last three meetings have addressed the board, people seem opposed to much more than the name of Walmart. They seem opposed to its business practices, 
It's unscrupulous practices of how it wins businesses and basically dominates the competition. Another quote that I found interesting after a lot of people went home. I, as an employee, want to be successful. When it comes to brass tacks, this is all Walmart has done, meaning to be successful. Does Raytown want to be, to use the language from past meetings, married to or to be a neighbor of an entity or anything else for that matter who wants to win at all costs? I don't. I don't want to be associated with that or freely associate with people who do. Um, lastly, when I moved here about two years ago, I used to joke with my wife, this is Walmart, and if I were to run for mayor, my saying would be, Walmart, if we don't have it, you don't need it. We've got grocery stores. We've got pharmacies. We've got great hardware stores. So a lot of American-made products. Love it. We don't need a Walmart. The only thing we could improve upon to agree with some of the people who spoke here earlier is a place to get a steak and buy a pair of pants. That's what I'm with. Um, I really don't have anything else as it's been said before quite eloquently, probably better than I'm doing now, but I appreciate it if you take your time in making this decision. It's an important one. Thank you. My name is William Hedrick. I live at 9904 East 69th Street. I have been a resident of Raytown since 1954. Uh, I'm not here to represent myself this evening. I, I was fortunate to be on one of the other meetings. I don't intend to voice my opinion at this point. I'd like to read something that a uh, couple of married married woman and her husband asked me to come and represent them. Their names are Kenneth L. Johnson, Lois J. Johnson. They live at 10107 East 78th Terrace. Excuse me, 79th Terrace. Their at their phone number is three five three eight one nine three. And what they say, and they asked me to leave this with you when I leave here. They started out with a sentence saying, "I would never shop at a Walmart Gregory store." I don't know where they got the Gregory at, but anyhow, I guess maybe the old one they were talking about. After that, they, they wrote, no, 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 May 20th of this year. We do not want Walmart Food Center downtown Raytown because the traffic congestion it would cause. We do not think there would be changes specific for Walmart chances specific for Walmart in, in the city that do not comply with these. The, their writing is awful hard to read. <laughs> I think what they're talking about here is uh, at some of the other meetings there was something mentioned about uh, they didn't want to conform with present codes. I believe that's what they're talking about. And then they go on to say, we do not need another food store. Walmart now has two new in this vicinity, one on 350, the other on Blue Ridge. And I assume they're talking about where the Blue Ridge Mall used to be. And concerned about Walmart the writing is terrible. Walmart deciding they are not making enough profit and will abandon the building, then there will be question mark. And they sign it with their name and address and, and so forth. Uh, the only thing I would like to add that I've experienced myself and I said I wasn't going to do this 
Three years ago, my brother, his wife, and my wife went back to our area where we were raised at Cumberland, Iowa. Since Walmart moved in the area, there's no school. They had grade school, they had high schools. I went to them. There's no schools. There are two businesses left on Main Street. One is the post office, the other one is a bar. That's it. If you want anything, you're going to go to the neighboring town, Messina or Atlantic Highway, 15 miles away, to buy your groceries. Walmart don't have them there. Could that happen to Raytown? Thank you.